Thank you. Um, with that, Mr. President, um, I yield the floor to my good friend, someone who I've thoroughly enjoyed working with on this issue, and thank him again for this leadership on a very important issue that matters to all of us. Thank you very much. Mr. President. Senator from Connecticut. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, my thanks to my very distinguished colleague from Tennessee whose leadership and contribution to this bill has really been instrumental from the very start. And uh, I've really welcomed and, and been thankful for his partnership on this issue. As he has said so well, uh, these antibiotic resistant drugs are really a spreading scourge. The reports from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention suggest that MRSA infections are responsible for more than 17,000 deaths in the United States every year, more than AIDS and many other diseases that are regarded as public health threats. And all 50 states have seen rates of antibiotic-resistant E. coli infections double in less than 10 years. A lesser known bug, Acinobacter, a bacterium that affects increasing numbers of our troops serving in Iraq, has infected more than 700 of our service members since 2003. And the numbers are continuing to rise. Those numbers are alarming, and I have some charts that I'm going to show in just a moment that will be even more graphic than the numbers. But to put a human face on this problem, Jamel Sawyer a former college football player from Norwalk, Connecticut, knows all too well the crippling impact of these antibiotic-resistant infections. He was in school in Boston, suffered from severe back pain, a rising temperature, went to the hospital, and was told that he was suffering from this kind of antibiotic staph infest infection, an antibiotic resistant infection, which really surmounted multiple rounds of antibiotic treatment. He was left paralyzed and unable to walk. And he was paralyzed from the waist down, remains very severely handicapped as a result. And right now he is fighting to gain back his ability to walk and function normally. We are in an arms race with superbugs. We are in a fight with antibiotic resistant mutating germs that are a spreading, persistent, and pernicious problem all around the country. The resistance is fueled by careless use of antibiotics the kind of overuse of certain kinds of antibiotics or failure to use them properly. The next chart I want to show concerns Acidobacter. This bacteria has afflicted particularly our troops coming back from Iraq. It is, in fact, nicknamed Iractobacter by many military doctors, and it has literally jumped enormously. This was the case in the year 2000. Almost everywhere, rates below 5%. And the present incidence is very, very different, alarmingly so, in some states above 50%, including, I believe, New Mexico. Uh, in many parts of the East, above 30 to 40 percent, this kind of Acidobacter incidence is really uh, something that is a major national security problem insofar as 700 troops have been affected, infected with Acidobacter. And as uh, Robert Johnson, the director of Military Families United, said so eloquently about this disease, and I'm quoting, the worst part is that many of our men and women in uniform survived the war effort only to return and die of this infection in the continental United States. Thus, Military Family United strongly supports the GAIN Act, which would ensure that American companies 
have the motivation to combat the most modern, multi-drug resistant diseases. I brought uh, these charts simply to show how the spread of these superbug infections has, has really affected the entire United States. There are other diseases like MRSA and VERSA. They are a set of acronyms that are comparable to, in effect, a modern plague. Full, uh, fully a third of all deaths from H1N1 swoon, swine flu, for example, in 2009 were actually caused by antibiotic-resistant bacteria. According to the Infectious Disease Society of America, 100,000 deaths and 360,000 hospitalizations in the United States resulted from antibiotic-resistant infections at a cost of $26 billion to our health system annually. What's the reason for the rise and spread of these diseases? Well, the main reason is that we don't have new antibiotics to treat and cure them. And the reason for that dearth of new antibiotics goes to the fundamentals of modern economics involving the drug industry. Antibiotics are prescribed and used for a course of two weeks if they work. There are blockbuster drugs and miracle drugs that are used for the treatment of chronic disease and therefore are used often for lifetimes. The revenues from those blockbuster drugs are themselves blockbuster products and profits. And the problem with antibiotics is the lack of economic incentives to develop them in modern economics, the modern economics of the pharmaceutical industry. The GAIN Act would remedy that problem. It would incentivize the development and research required to implement and discover these new drugs. It would extend the data exclusivity rights for five years. It would speed and expedite consideration of these drugs by the FDA. It would provide a fast track, essentially, and enable prompt review moderate and eliminate the kinds of reg regulatory hurdles that are so important in providing not only incentives but also a track to consumers so that they would have the availability of these drugs. I personally would welcome other ideas, if there are any, for strengthening the incentives for development of these antibiotics that are so important to treat and cure drug the antibiotic resistant germs that cause these problems. I hope that we will continue to have the kind of bipartisan momentum in favor of these new developments.